four masses are positioned at the corners of a square with sides of length 40 centimeters. Let M1 equal M3 equal 3 kilograms, and let M2 equal M4 equal 4 kilograms. Find the net gravitational force on M4, both magnitude and direction, due to the other masses. So here's my four masses. These are at the corners of a square, and I'm interested in mass four, this one right here. And I know that the gravitational force is always attractive, so there's going to be a force from M1, a force from M2, and a force from M3. Let's draw a free body diagram for mass number four. So here's a set of axes, and I'm going to put mass number four right at the center right here. And I'm going to label all the forces, all the gravitational forces that are acting on mass number four. So for mass number four, I have the uh, force from mass number one that's going to be pointing up right here. I have the force from mass number two that's going to be pointing at an angle right here. And I have the force from mass number three that's going to be pointing here. Okay, and I should label these. Let's call this one force number one. That'll be from mass number one. I'll call this one force number two. That'll be from mass number two. And I'll call this one force number three because it's from mass number three. And this angle right here, I'll call that angle theta. So now I can look at the sum of the forces in the x direction and the sum of the forces in the y direction. So in this case, for my x direction, I'm going to have, well, let's see, I have F3, and I have the x component of F2. And if we look at the diagram, we see that's going to be a cosine, so cosine theta. Okay. And now I look at the sum of the forces in the y direction. So in the y direction, I'm going to have, what do I have? I have F1, and I have the y component of F2, which is now going to be a sine. OK, so if I can find Fx net and Fy net, then I can find the total force. Uh, so let's work on finding each of these. So first, let's find F net X. So this is the net force in the X direction. So I'll call it F net X. So that's going to be F3. So that's going to be this one right here. That's going to be G, M1, or I'm sorry, not M1. I have M3. So this is a 3 and M4, because we're talking about the force that M4 feels from M3. I'm so used to writing M1, M2, but no, here we have 3 and 4, and this is divided by, uh, well, we have the sides of the square. I guess let's call the sides of the square L. So every side of the square here will be L. So I won't do all four, but you get the idea. Okay, so this is L squared plus, and now we have F2 cosine theta. So for F2, this is going to be G M2 M4 over, well, I can't use L here because this distance is not L. That's the diagonal distance. But I can make a little triangle here. And I know that this is L. So that'd be this down here. And this is L. That'll be this side here. And I want to know the diagonal distance. So Pythagorean theorem says that this must be L root 2. But I want to square this to put it down here, so that's going to be 2L squared. And then I have to tack on the cosine of theta. Okay, so for F net X, I think I'm ready to plug in. Although before I do actually, let's do one thing here. I see a lot of common factors here. I see there's a G in both terms, there's an M4 in both terms, and there's an L squared in both terms. That way I won't have to write them twice when I plug in. So if I factor that stuff out, then I'm left with M3 and I have a half here plus a half, and then there's an M2 and a cosine theta. Okay, so G, that's that gravitational constant. That's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. And the units of that are newtons 
times meters squared per kilogram squared. And then I have mass four. Mass four is four kilograms. And all that is gonna be over L squared. L was 40 centimeters, that's 0 0.40 meters. And that's gonna be squared. Okay, and then inside here I have mass three. Mass three is three kilograms. Plus one half times mass two. Mass two is four kilograms. Times the cosine of theta, but what's theta? Well, this is theta right here and if this is L and this is L, they're both the same, this has to be 45. This is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So this is the cosine of 45 degrees. And if you do all of this on a calculator, you end up getting 7.36 times 10 to the negative 9 newtons. Okay. That's the x direction. What about the y direction? So for the y direction, I have f net y. And what's that going to look like? Well, first it's f1. So that's going to be g, and it's going to be m1, m4 over l squared. Plus, and then I have this term uh, right here. Sorry, the F2, which actually is this thing right here. It's just now with a sine theta instead of a cosine theta. So I can just copy this here. It's G M2 M4 over 2 L squared. And then instead of a cosine theta, I'm going to have a sine theta. Okay. And again, I can simplify this a little bit. I have a common factor of G m4 over l squared and what's left over I have an m1 plus one half m2 sine theta but if you look at this this looks a lot like this the only difference is that instead of m3 here I have an m1 but m1 and m3 they're both three kilograms they're the same and if you look at this here, the only difference is that instead of a cosine theta, I have a sine theta. But the sine of 45 and the cosine of 45 are the exact same number. So in this case, I'm going to get the same value. I'm going to get 7.36 times 10 to the negative 9 newtons. And if you don't believe me, you can go ahead and try plugging it in on your calculator. But, um, but if you can recognize that you're going to get the same thing, it can save you a lot of work. Okay, now I can get F net total here, just F net without an X or a Y. And to do that, I'm going to take the square root of F net X squared and add that to F net Y squared. And all that is under the square root. Okay, but these numbers are the same, so I can really just uh, multiply this by 2. So let me show you. I can just do the square root of 2 times 7.36 times 10 to the negative 9 newtons under the square root. And you do this on a calculator, and you end up getting 1.04 times 10 to the negative 8 newtons. Okay, that's my magnitude. But it says I have to get the magnitude and the direction. Well, the direction's pretty easy, though, because I know that F1 and F3 were the same in magnitude because M1 and M3 are the same. And F2 lies right along the 45-degree angle here. So when I add all of these up, I'm going to get a net force pointing at the 45-degree angle. So I could say at 45 degrees above the positive x-axis. Another way to see that is if you look at F net 
x and f net y, they're both the same value. So if these are the same value, when you add them up, you're going to get something that points right in between them at the 45 degree angle.